Most people, they follow what they see other people do. Here, most people, they want to push the limits of what's going on. That kind of what set us apart. Having a big rear car, for me, is being able to make performance and have a big wheel car and still do what I can do with a little rim car. It's the balance between over the top and it's really not a balance, just over the top. It's just being over the top, man. Having something that's cool and everywhere you go, you know, people pointing at it. You know what I'm saying? Look, give me the thumbs up. Carlos Major, we're here seeing them custom car creations. We build custom cars, big rim cars. It was an old gas station, it was a fuel city. It was our customer lounge slash barbershop. It's where we hang out ourselves after we done, you know, we finish working for the day or on the weekends, we decide not to work. We do a lot of grilling, you know, cooking out, hanging out. And you know, it's on the main road, so pretty much if the guys see us out here, they gonna stop and come. Uh, Bug might, you know, send out a, something on IG or Facebook and say, hey, we're kicking it at the shop tonight. Everybody pretty much gonna pull up. My name, June Bug. Been messing with cars since I was a kid. Car culture, you know, that's been going on for forever. But this big rim culture kind of like got a blast in like the early 2000s. It used to be the show called East Coast Riders. And it was like basically like a lot of Florida cars with big wheels because they was like pushing the scene at the time. And from there, the show went across the United States and they went to like the major cities. Within all the major cities went, they went to, they came to Huntsville, Alabama because of our car culture and we kind of like hold weight to be a small city. Back in the day, it was like theme cars that were like, you would have the Lucky Charms car, you would have the Reese's Pieces car, you would have the Clorox car or the Tide car. Like everybody had their own different thing that they did. And everybody cars was like lifted up real high, like they was waiting on the flood or some shit. That era in the car scene really like ignited fire around here. Cause when we, some of the theme cars around here was just so crazy that they went viral and and it just like put light on smaller Huntsville. Went from theme cars to pretty much everybody wanted to go into candy paint, flip paint. Rim started moving by themselves. Now they still doing the candy and the flip paint. You know, everybody's leaning more toward the brush look on your wheels, and you have to be the staggered or you know three piece. You know, rims are narrow in the front, wide in the back, and lip different. So they kind of kind of keep it more classier, but at the same time kind of loud and obnoxious. Just to let you know that they're, they're doing a lot of interior work where people went, wasn't into the interior back in the day. Uh, they did the interior did with lights and different kinds of stuff going on. It's changed a lot, but a lot of things remain the same. A lot of people that look at the big rim culture, they think that every car with big rims is a donk. A donk is a Caprice or Impala 71 to 76. That's a donk. Like that Pacific car is a donk. 
a G body is like a Monte Carlo, a Cutlass, a Grand National, Grand Prix. Then, you know, you got box Chevys. And people that's outside of the culture, they look at a box Chevy with 30 inch wheels, 28, oh, that's a dunk. It's not a dunk, it's a box Chevy. So, you, you got so many different sections. As far as SUVs, the bigger the rim, the better. Because if you get some 26s on your SUV and the guy pull up with some 32s, you kind of going to get looked over. You know what I'm saying? But it just depends on the details and what you do to your car. Because, like like I said, the guy with the 32s, he seen the guy with the 26s car and was like, hey, I'm going to kill him. He ain't going to have nothing on me. People put so much into their cars, and you're going to always see something new, and it's always somebody better. Big Rim Racing just then blew up, and that's kind of like what's pushing the culture forward right now. You got big rims on your car. You don't have slicks, so you got to be able to put that power to the ground. You got the biggest motor in there and stump it, and it spins all the way down. And this guy right here, he got his car figured out with the big rims. He punch it, it get on down. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of like what's going on right now. Who can have the biggest motor with big wheels and put power to the ground? Most families of everybody that came up around us had dads, uncles, everybody raced. So well, as soon as we got our license at 16 years old, all of us street raced in the street and hey, this is what this city is about. A big wheel race car is essentially the drivetrain of a race car, but the shell of a show car. So on the outside, you have anywhere from 24 to 28 inch rims. We don't let the smaller rims get in because there's a big weight difference. So anything between 24s and 28 inch rims, that's considered big rims. The car has the function just like it would if you was to drive it every day on the street. I mean, it still has to have full interior headlight. I mean, you can't cut anything out. It has to be a show car, but a race car. Four years ago, everybody was pretty much just racing on the street with these cars because, I mean, you just had your average GM small block 350, 383 engine, and it really wasn't enough to do, like, you know, break the tires or loose or anything like that. But in the last few years, we're making over a thousand horsepower in these cars now. So all the racing has came to the track now. You know, we're a smaller city, you know, we're a smaller state. So the bigger states, they all look at us like small fries. So to show them that, hey, this guy from a dirt road from down in Huntsville, Alabama can do this too. It's just an adrenaline rush and I love it. 